Hey and welcome back to our jQuery Ajax video tutorial series from rebsmedia.com. This is part two of four in our series on how to utilize and understand jQuery's Ajax methods. Uh, if you missed out on the first video, be sure to check it out by clicking the link below this video. Otherwise, uh, let's begin. Now in part two, I'm going to show you how you can start putting these Ajax methods to use in uh, your current sites. Uh, so today we're going to be creating a, uh, a dynamic hover effect that loads data from our database when the user hovers their uh, cursor over an element, this being like a, a button for example. And uh, actually a prime example of this would be the uh, visitphilly.com website. And if you've never checked it out, um, it's this right here, visitphilly.com. And you'll notice uh, these three items right here, these three uh, drop down menus, um, they load via Ajax. So you see the loading symbol go off. It pulls in the data. And you know, the great thing about this is is if you have a lot a lot of content on the page, you know, you don't want to just shove it all out there on onto the user right off the bat, because it'll actually uh slow down the load time. So uh the way that they handle this is by using Ajax to pull in the data when the user needs it. And they also show the uh well, we can't see it again, but we refresh. Uh we see the loading symbol to let us know that there are there is content there and it's not blank. All right, so that's pretty much what we're going to be recreating. It's just this menu right here. Now our tutorial won't be as extreme as uh, as this as the visit Philly, but uh, I'm basically going to give you a uh, just a concept of how this works. All right, so let's get started with the HTML. Um, basically, we're going to create three buttons. Uh, each one's going to have its own ID, and this is. Uh, the reason that we're giving each one its own ID is so that we can pull in uh, different content for each one, and I'll, I'll explain that a bit later. Um, class, I'm just going to call this wrapper so I can style each one accordingly. Um, we'll have the button. Actually, this should be a class. And then below our button, we'll have our uh, another class called container. What the heck is wrong with me today? And insert a button. I'm just going to be a little fancy. Alright, so button one, button two, and button three. So let's refresh this. Yep. Now you can fast forward past this if you want. I'm going to uh, take some time and style these buttons real quick because I'm anal about the way things look. So, uh, Alright, now that we have our styling done, um, we can move on to uh, the fun stuff. Alright, the first thing we need to do is actually just uh, hide our containers. So what we'll just say is uh, dot container dot hide. Alright, so those are hidden. All right, now uh, the fun part. Uh, we need to set up an array to actually uh, capture each of these buttons to apply the same effects to it, because we don't want to create a function for each and every single individual item. So the way we're going to do that is, uh, again, just we're going to create an array with our selector. Uh, so for each button, so button one, comma, button two, comma, and button three. And we're going to say dot each. So for each one, um, we're going to create a function. And uh, we're going to set up a couple of variables. The first one, uh, I'm just going to call this button. And that equals this. This being whichever one it is at the time. So it might be button one, it might be button two, or button three. Um, then we're going to say uh, another one. And we're going to call this, um, we'll call it con for our container. And this will be a uh, this will kind of be our uh, identifier because as you see right now we're not using any pound signs or any uh, p or, uh, periods for our class or IDs or anything of that nature. So uh, we're setting that up now. And the the reason we're not doing that we're not identifying the uh, whether it's an ID or a class is because we're actually going to use this to also pull in uh, certain data for each uh, drop down. So. Our variable con is going to be uh, our button ID, and it's also going to select our children. Our children being uh, the container in this, so dot container. So for whichever button is selected at the time, find the child, the child, 
being the container. All right. Now we need to set up our hover. So on mouse over, in other words, uh, doing the same thing. Dot hover. All right. Now we're going to set up another function inside our hover. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a class to identify which one is being hovered at the moment. And uh, we need a way to find out what's been mouse out, or I'm sorry, what uh, what isn't being hovered anymore. So what we're doing is uh, each time the person hovers over one of the new buttons, we're going to take anything else that's been hovered and do a mouse out. In other words, we're going to unhide it. So unhide uh, previous hover. We could say that. And then we're going to take uh, what we're on right now, so this being the button that we're on, and say add class dot hover. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we need a way to identify if the data has been loaded already. And so basically what I'm getting at is each time somebody rolls over one of these, that's not going to do anything at the moment, but each time somebody rolls over one, we don't want to send a request every single time they roll over it to the server. So when they roll over it once, the request needs to be sent, pull in the data, all right? And when they roll over it again, it just needs to show that data that's already been loaded. We don't want to send off another request. So the way we're going to do that is by doing an if statement. And actually, before we do that, we need to set up a variable, and I'm just going to call this uh, cache. And uh, what this is going to do is we're going to find out if there's any items within the container. So uh, we're going to go back and use our variable con and find the children inside that. And for children, we're going to find uh, a p tag. Alright, because as of right now, uh, the children inside our container, there's none. Alright. So when we load data, we'll know for sure that there's a p tag. And the reason I know that there's a p tag, because if we look inside of our, uh, our data, when we're pulling in the information, I have a p tag set up in the while loop. Alright. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to say if uh, cache.size. Now, size, if uh, you don't know, is just a way to count uh, a number of items inside of a variable or a, um, an object or a container or an element. So, in this case, uh, we're saying 